I would be called into Jonathan's trailer because I have memorized the script. Jonathan would say to me, let's go over the scene. I've changed all the lines. And he did. He single-handedly created the character of Dr. Smith. He knew from the very beginning that this snarling, nefarious spy, saboteur, would be old, quick, that the audience would just want to see him killed off or whatever. So he's very quickly started turning the character into a comedic kind of the Dr. Smith that we all love to hate. And Irwin Allen called him into his offices early on into the first season and said, I know what you're doing, do more. That's a true story. Uh, so Jonathan had carte blanche. In fact, he's the only actor I've ever worked with on any show who had carte blanche producer's approval to write all his dialogue. I would memorize my cues, but they wouldn't be there. You know, he would just, what was on the page, none of that, I'll make it better, yes indeed. He created all, all the alliterative insults to the robot, you bubble-headed booby, uh, anyway. Um, so I would, Jonathan would call me into his trailer and I would know my lines and he would say, and this is how it goes. And if my cue had been, what are we going to do? Now my cue would be, I can't fathom the depths of this madness. How dare we indeed? What are we going to do? <laughs> I go, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and we had a wonderful chemistry together. You know, uh, obviously the chemistry between Jonathan and, and myself and Bobby May inside the robot too, to a degree, um, was, was, worked. And the thing about Jonathan and I, and I think it's probably safe to say it has a lot to do with the reason that we ended up with the bulk of the work, is because we would go in there and do it in one take. Two takes if they wanted safety. We never screwed up. I mean, I, it's true. It, it is true. We just, we, did, we didn't mess up. We'd go in there, we knew our lines. You know, you learn certain things in, in show business. You know, acting is, is both a craft and it's an art. And you can be taught a craft, but I don't think you can be taught to be an artist. I think you're either just of that ilk or you're not. But you learn how to say, okay, I'm, I'm coming around this rock and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna hit this mark and I'm gonna look at that thing. And you just kind of learn to count those steps. It's, it's 22 steps. So you're running along or you're doing what you're doing, but you're also aware of the fact that, you know, okay, 22 steps in your brain, that's, that's where I stop. So that you're not going around looking for your little T-square in the sand. Um, things like that are, are the craft that you can be taught. But I don't think you can be taught to do it believably in one or two takes all the time. And Jonathan and I were just really good at that and so I think the bulk we got uh, I think the show shifted that way because it was like wow we're, you know we're not in going into overtime here we're you know we're saving money and these guys are a pleasure to work with Jonathan Harris was so much fun he loved being Dr. Smith every day after lunch he handed out treats to the entire cast and crew it was usually Tootsie Roll Pops, and he would hand it out to everybody after lunch. And in those days, there were tours. People got on tours and went through 20th Century Fox, and Jonathan was like, come on in, hello, yes, welcome to Lost in Space. I am Dr. Smith, how are you? He just, he just held court, and he was bigger than life, and he truly was that. That's truly who he was. He was a bigger than, he, he reinvented himself. He was this little Jewish man from the Bronx who went to pharmaceutical school and then started going to Broadway plays and, and going, oh, uh, yes, and that's what I want to do. And then suddenly he starts talking like this and he's just reinvented himself and became Jonathan Harris, who became Dr. Smith. And uh, he, made it, he made it easy. He made it easy. He was, he was uh, very easy to work with.